I made these four must-have CNC accessories that I think every CNC user should have, and I wanna show you how I made them. Well, I'm looking for some woods that we have lying around that I can make a few projects for our CNC that's gonna make my life a little bit easier. And for a new CNC or somebody new to CNC, these four projects just might help in your workflow, make things a little bit easier for you, and also help you manage your stuff a little better. I think we're gonna start off today with maybe making some wooden hold down. So I'm looking for a piece of material that's gonna work for that. I think a piece of plywood would be good. And I think this piece right here, Looks like it's got some screw holes in it. This is gonna be a good start. So let's go over to our CNC machine and take a look at the spoil board we have right now. So this spoil board I made a week or so ago. I put some threaded inserts in it. Uh, I put some lines on it so that we could line up our material a little bit easier, which is really quite nice, except for all we have down, all we have right now for hold downs are these metal ones, which are great. They work really well. There's a couple of cons to these. Uh, one is they've got quite a high profile and also they're made of metal. So if you hit them, like somebody may have done in the last project that was cut on this machine, um, you're gonna ruin the hold down and also potentially your bit. So making them out of wood makes them a little bit easier to cut into if you happen to hit them, it's not gonna ruin your bit at all. So let's take a second and do some measurements of our material and hop into the software and design us up some hold downs. I think cut 2D is gonna be perfect for this project. Uh, it's gonna be a, a couple pockets and then a profile cut and we can do all that in cut 2D. So let's just go ahead and open that up and we're gonna create a new file. Uh, it's gonna be a single-sided job. It's gonna be 12 by six and I believe it's a little bit less than a half an inch thick. So we're just gonna guess at it now and then I'll measure it properly later. Yeah, a little bit less than a half an inch thick. And we're gonna use the bottom left corner to start our, starting our design. So let's just go ahead now and start to create our hold down. We're gonna be making a, a lot of use of the rectangle tool to start out with, and especially the external radius feature. Let's go ahead and click that. Now our anchor point, we don't need to worry about because we're gonna click anywhere in our job space to create that. In this case, we're gonna be using the radius external corner of a quarter inch. This is more of a design thing, but we're gonna use it later for a more functional purpose. The width of this rectangle is three quarters of an inch and the height is three and a half inches. See, we're just gonna click anywhere in our job space and that will create that rectangle for us. We'll just move it somewhere it's convenient. The next rectangle we need is exactly the same width. We just need to make it a little bit shorter. So this is gonna be for the leg of our hold down. And there we go. We can just go ahead and create that and snap that to the bottom of that first rectangle. We can snap it because we have our smart snapping tools turned on up there. Now the next rectangle we're gonna create is for the actual um, slot that we're going to slide our bolt into. Now we're going to make sure that we use a uh, one eighth of an inch radius and we also make the width of this just a bit bigger than my tool. That way we're going to have nice round ends to this and our tool will fit in there for sure. Let's close that down and we can just go ahead and position that somewhere roughly where we need it. Now the next thing we need to do is think a little bit about the tooling. So we're going to use a brand new layer for this, and we're gonna call this layer pocket offset. And we're gonna take the outside vector, that first rectangle that we made, and we're gonna offset that onto this particular layout. And we're gonna choose a color for that so we can see the difference. So let's just go ahead and select that vector. And because we have the pocket offset selected, that layer, when we do the offset, it's gonna offset right onto that layer for us. So it's all nice and organized for us. Let's select that and we're gonna use the array copy tool to create six of these. This is a great tool if you're gonna be creating the same thing over and over again. Make sure that we use the gap for our spacing of about a half an inch. That should be lots of room for us to get our tool in between these and leave some material behind. We'll just go ahead and copy that. That looks good. Now let's go ahead and jump into our tooling. We have everything we need now. First thing we need to do is to create the first pocket. So we're gonna go ahead and select all of the vectors we need to create that pocket. We're gonna select the outside vector and then the little leg vector. And we're gonna pocket between these two about halfway through our material. We use a very basic pocket cut for this. Use a quarter inch end mill. Nothing fancy about this at all. Except for my plan is, is to use an up cut bit. I'm not gonna use a compression cutter like normally we would do in plywood. 
Um, I'm going to be a little bit lazy because I know that these are going to be very basic things and we're going to replace them often, so I'm not going to worry about things too much. Um, this might come back to get me in the end because the top edges of these will be a bit rough looking, but we'll see how it goes. Now we're going to go ahead and do the slots. We're going to use that same bit. I don't want to do a tool change and we're just going to pocket starting at a quarter inch down because that's where that the last pocket left off. And we're going to go all the way through our material. So Z minus that 0.25 of an inch with that same end mill. And we'll just cut that out. And that's perfect. The last thing we need to do is do a profile cut to cut these out. That's a pretty simple job. We're just gonna go ahead and select all of those original rectangles that we created. Do a quick profile cut. We're gonna cut all the way down through our material. We're gonna make sure we cut outside those lines and we're gonna add in some tabs. We're not gonna use 3D tabs this time, we're gonna use basic tabs, and we're just gonna click on the vector where we want them to be. Nice little tip here for you is you can slide those little yellow dots along if you don't quite click where you want them to be, and you can move them into a better position. Most of the time I'd be showing or, or telling you to look out for the grain of your wood, but because this is plywood, I'm not really sure what those layers are gonna give me, so I'm gonna hope for the best here with these locations. Let's just go ahead now and create that tool path. Okay, I think those look great. So let's go over the machine and cut these. Now, because I don't have hold downs, I'm gonna need a double-sided tape this to my spoil board. I need to be really careful because if I cut all the way through this and cut into my spoil board, I'm gonna hit those threaded inserts. So I don't wanna do that. So we're gonna try really hard for, to have that not happen. So let's go ahead and do that. over there uh, we got some time on our hands um, so let's have a little thought about maybe making a tool tray somewhere to, to store your tools uh, or maybe your little extra bits that you have hanging around your CNC machine keep it a little bit more organized um, right now I'm just got them sitting on a piece of foam over there so uh, uh, let's get to making something I'm gonna need to get a piece of material again um, I, I really want to use some of the um, old material again for this project. And I think the best idea is some of this old pine that we have kicking around. We've got some old shelves and stuff. And um, actually this board right here, I think would be, would be perfect. It's kind of, part of this isn't very good for anything because of the knots. So I think that we can use this part right here to make a nice little tool tray in. And I think most of this will be done with pockets and uh, profiles again. So we can go ahead and jump right back into Cut 2D and start up a new job, take some measurements, and get designing ourselves a really nice little tool tray. Let's go ahead and get our material measured up and start a new job. Now this tool tray is gonna heavily rely on the rectangle tool, a lot like the hold downs. Now you'll note that when I create this first rectangle, the anchor point is set to the bottom left. Now this is gonna be used for my cutout pass of my tool tray. But when I go to create this, I'm gonna find the center of my job space and click. And you notice that the bottom left-hand corner of my rectangle is now anchored to the center. If I change that to the center point, my anchor point to the center point and do that, then it goes ahead and creates it in the middle of my job. Now I'm gonna create a bunch of rectangles. This first one is gonna be about the size of one of our standard tools with radius corners. I'm gonna create two of those, one that's slightly smaller at the bottom so I can create a deeper pocket and I can push my tool down and pop it up so I can get a hold of it much easier. I'm gonna use that array copy tool again. We're gonna create an array of six of these. Now I'm gonna show you something really special about the rectangle tool. Without any rectangle selected, if I open up my rectangle dialog and I hold down my shift key and select a rectangle, then my form gets populated with those numbers. Then all I need to do is just go ahead and change the ones that I'd like to. In this case, Move the anchor point to the bottom left, change the width to one and a quarter inches, and there we have it. A larger pocket and it keeps the same radius corners. We'll do this with the smaller one as well. Again, so I can cut the smaller pocket a bit deeper and I can use it so that I can push down that tool and pop up the top end so I can grab it easier. The next thing we're gonna do is make a couple pockets for our hold downs. I'm gonna bring up the hold downs file 
and copy the two vectors that I need, these two right here, copy those to my clipboard, that's right click and go up to copy. And because it's cut 2D desktop to cut 2D desktop, I can paste it right into my other instance of cut 2D desktop. Go ahead and paste that somewhere where I want it. Use zero on my keyboard to rotate that around. And there I have it. Now I can just manually place these in a, a grid of four. I think that looks pretty good in the end. Again, uh, I'm gonna cut those um, end spots a bit deeper so that the leg of my hole down can fit in there. The next thing I'm gonna do is create a spot for my wrench. I've measured that up. I'm gonna create something that's about six and a half inches by about, um, let's just take a look, two inches. And we'll create that there. I'm gonna use that same rectangle and copy it across. Use the same thing as before without any rectangle selected, go in the rectangle tool and I can go ahead and modify that to what I'd like, keeping those radius the same way and expanding it the way I want it to be. Just kind of move those around a little bit and get them place where I want them to be. I'm gonna copy this down here. I'm gonna make a spot for my pencil using zero on my keyboard, rotate that around again. Let's make a quick adjustment to that rectangle. Copy this guy over, and because I have the snapping turned on, he'll click to the end. Now I'm gonna group these together, so that way I can go ahead and align them to this outside vector a little bit easier. So go ahead and do that. And then we're gonna do the same with all everything else in the job, all the other um, spots that we're gonna be using for pocketing, but you have to remember to ungroup them when you're all done, okay? That way we can create tooling in the proper way. And that looks pretty good there in the end. That's great. Now let's go ahead and ungroup those like I mentioned, and we're gonna go into our tool paths tab and start to create some tooling. Very simple pockets, nothing too complicated. We're gonna make sure we remember how far we do our original cut downs, and then we're gonna add some depth to that again for those little extra pockets at the bottom. And you'll see what I mean here. Start depth is the same as the, the, the cut depth of the pocket before, and then we're gonna cut down a bit deeper so we have those extra little recesses there. And we're gonna go through all of these and they'll all have slightly different depths depending on my needs. And you can go ahead in your file and change these to whatever you'd like them to be. Um, I might have made these pockets a bit deeper in the end, but for this go, I think they're okay. Now the one that I really wanna pay attention to are gonna be the pockets for the hold downs. We need to slightly oversize these hold down pockets so that we can freely put in and out our hold downs. And the idea is that the leg will go down in deeper. So you turn it upside down, put the leg in and off you go. So these first pockets are only gonna go down about 0.125 of an inch. That's half of the thickness of the, the longer spot of my hold downs. Now we're gonna make sure we use a pocket allowance. So this is a negative allowance to make this pocket bigger of about 0.25. I might have in the end gone a little bit more than that, but for this, I think that'll be fine. And it, 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 they did come in and out okay. But again, you might wanna enlarge that just slightly if you want them to be a little easier to get in and out. And we need to make sure that we use the same pocket allowance on those smaller, deeper pockets for the leg of the hold downs, because if not, then they won't fit in there. And you should try to make them the same, so your, your allowance should be the same for both of these. Um, that just make things look nicer and everything will fit together much better as well. So just don't forget that. You'll see that I had a start depth of the original depth of the original pocket, and we're going down a quarter inch, that's the thickness of the leg, and there's that pocket allowance we're gonna look for. All right, going, that looks really good. The last tool path we need to make is our cutout pass. That's fairly easy to do. That's just selecting this outside rectangle, making it a profile cut. We're gonna cut all the way through our material using the same end mill. We need to add in some tabs. So we're just gonna edit those and place those where we'd like them to be. We're gonna use 3D tabs in this case. 3D tabs I sometimes like to use because I don't get the dwell marks on the sides or the edges of those solid tabs. Now one thing that's really great about our 3D preview is you can go ahead and check what you've got and make sure that the toolpath is gonna to give you what you need. I think that my tabs are a bit tiny, so I'll probably go back in before I actually cut this and make those tabs a little tiny bit bigger. But for now, let's do that change and let's go into the machine and cut this thing. Okay, now that I got, that's all done. And luckily I got the tool tray done in the time it took for that to cut. Let's go have a look and see what we've got in the end. 
They look pretty good. I didn't quite come all the way through the material, which is actually okay, because I don't want to hit this spoil board at all. As we, if you remember, we used double-sided tape to hold this down with. From, from now on out, we're gonna use a sacrificial piece of material in between the spoil board and the material. And with the help of these new hold downs, we'll be able to clamp that all into place. That way, if I happen to cut through my material, I still won't hit that spoil board. So let's get this off and we'll see if we can go ahead and cut these out. Oh, and look at that. Didn't quite go all the way through, like I, which is probably already, like I said, good. But we can just go ahead and cut these out now. So I got them all sanded down except for the middle bit, um, which I just can pop out with my finger. This is pretty, pretty bad plywood, but that's okay because we're just using the stuff that just has to be kicking around the labs to make uh, something that's quite functional. So uh, I'm going to go ahead now and remove the stuff out of the middle, and then I think we're ready to go on to using these in practice on the CNC machine. As I said earlier, I used some pretty bad plywood for these uh, hold downs, and they're really, really brittle. Um, so I don't think I can use those. So what I did was I went ahead and I cut some new ones with some other plywood that we had around, much better quality plywood. It still was an off cut from some of the job that we did. I think these are gonna suit much better. So we're gonna go ahead and use these. Now the next thing I wanna do is, as I mentioned before, is I'm gonna use a piece of sacrificial uh, waste board. This is just a piece of MDF that came out of my, my kitchen that I'm renovating. I'm gonna double-sided tape that to this current waste board. That way if I go through my main material, I'm not gonna hit those um, threaded inserts, which would be bad for my tool. So I'm gonna go ahead and du I'll double sided tape that down. It's gonna go ahead and then clamp this down to the surface uh, of uh, my CNC bed. And then I'm gonna go ahead and run the tool tray. Now the tool tray is the same as these. It's only one bit and there's five or six different tool paths around with the one bit. So we're gonna go straight through that. It's gonna be simple and easy in this piece of, uh, I think it's an old, uh, uh, maybe an old shelf or something like that, I'm not sure. Let's go ahead and do that. So there we have it, the tool tray is all done. Because I used an up cut bit, uh, it's not as clean as what it should be. So in the end, I should have probably used a down cut bit, but that's okay, I'm still happy with it for what it is. Um, for a brand new CNCer, sometimes it's a, it's a little confusing on what bits you should have in your drawer. Well, my suggestion is that when you go out and you get started, you need a good end mill. And this happens to be a quarter inch end mill. It's great for pocketing, for making big cutouts and so on, profile cuts. It's a really good handy bit to have. A ball nose bit, it's a rounded end. You can use this for finishing and also putting um, scalloped edges on things. It's a good universal bit to have in your collection. And then also a V bit for um, doing any kind of lettering and so on. This happens to be a 60 degree V bit. It's one of our ones that we use all the time and it's really quite nice. Of course, once you get used to your CNC, you can add to your collection with tapered ball nose, smaller ball noses, smaller end mills, all kinds of different bits out there. But these are the standard three that I'd probably suggest that you start out with when you first get going. Ah, well there we go. So the next tool I think that's really important for a new CNC user, or somebody who has a CNC and just wants to add to their tools in the shop, is a wooden mallet. This one's been kicking around the labs for a while now. It's quite nice, it does the trick, but I'd like to make a better version, something I can share with you guys. Um, these are great, you can make them rough and ready or you can make them you know, really quite nice, nice objects to have around. So let's go have a look and see if we can find some wood and then we'll get into the software and design it. I like to use a nice hardwood I think in the end. This piece here might make a really nice handle. Notice how it's a little bit darker, I think that would be great. And also I like to use a nice hardwood for the head of it as well. Maybe some oak if I can find some kicking around. We've got all kinds of bits and pieces here used for other projects. Uh, I don't think I need to dig too deep because I think this piece right here this top bit, 
That might do the trick. Let's go see if I can make it work. Okay, I'm not going to speed this one up too much because I think there's going to be a lot of tips in this that you're going to carry through for a lot of your jobs. So my initial job setup is just going to be big enough for my full mallet design. So I think that's going to be about 6 inches by 12 inches. And I'm going to assume that 1 inch thick is going to be fine. This is really just for my design, so it really doesn't matter too much. The reason why I chose to use VCarve Desktop for this job was because I was initially going to add in some fluting tool paths to round over the handle and add in some V-carving for customization. But that would require a two-sided job. I think that's a bit too complicated for this basic job. So what I want to do is leave that to you. The upshot of that is that you can go ahead and open up this file into Cut2D and cut it using that software if you'd like to. Or you can open it in VCarve or Aspire and go ahead and customize that as much as you like, including turning it into a double-sided job. Let's start off by creating the head. That's going to require a rectangle about five inches by three inches. And we're going to just go ahead and click anywhere in our job space to create that. Let's close that down. Now I'm going to need a single line, a polyline, that we're going to use to angle the front of this mallet. Now the internet says about five degrees. Let's go with that. Let's select that. You click the center again and move the center rotation point up to the corner. Now we're going to go into our rotate dialog. Make sure we choose a relative rotation five degrees and click apply and here we go. Now what we're gonna do is select that rectangle and go into node mode, select the left and the right node at the bottom, press H on the keyboard and what that does, is if I go ahead and move that node on the left, it will mirror that movement to the node on the right. That's perfect, we don't need that line anymore, so let's delete that. Now let's go into um, node mode again and we're going to bezier those top and bottom lines by pressing B on our keyboard, select those nodes, those control handles, then we're going to hit V on our keyboard and again we can mirror up and down on our job. That works really slick. Now let's create a little bit of a design feature here. We're going to go ahead and fillet those points to be about a quarter inch. That'll give us a nice profile that we can look at. The next thing we need to do is to create the handle. That's going to require a rectangle. Now this rectangle is going to be about one and a quarter inches wide by 11 inches tall and we're going to click right in the center of our job to create that because that's where we want the handle to kind of start. That looks really good. Let's close that down. I need to go ahead and select the head and we're going to copy that. And what we're going to do is we're going to trim the handle. We want that profile across the top and because I trimmed off all those vector vectors and had rejoin trimmed vectors together I have this vector that is complete and not broken. So I can paste back in that head again and now I can go ahead and edit my handle. I'm gonna insert a midpoint by hovering over that top segment and choosing, right clicking and choosing insert midpoint, do the same for the bottom. I'm gonna cut those by hovering over those nodes and right clicking and choosing cut from that drop down. I'm gonna insert in a couple nodes here by just pressing I on my keyboard. I also could have right clicked and done that as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and right click over top of that segment in the middle and turn it to a bezier. We're just gonna move those control handles a bit to give us a little bit of shape to our handle. Move out that bottom one just a little bit too to give it a little more character. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to mirror that vector across the horizontal Part of our job, we're going to make sure we flip about the center and we create a mirrored copy. So let's close that, select those two, right click on that and make sure that we join that, those two vectors together. Do that twice just to make sure everything is joined up nicely. Next thing we're going to do is hover over top of that bottom vector, go into node mode and delete out that center point, right click on that and we're going to turn that into a bezier and again, give it a little bit more style there at the bottom. Then we're going to go ahead and fill up the corners of that handle at the base to make it look really nice in the end. Now we need some dowel holes. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to drop the dowel hole there. And I made a bit of a mistake there, so I want to make sure that I change that to be 0.55 of an inch, not the two and a half that I had. And we can just go ahead and size that down there and we'll drop two more of those in. And that'll be a nice little design feature. Those bottom two won't do anything, but they'll look nice. Now, the next thing you want to do is copy these onto some new sheets. So we're going to rename the current sheet. We're going to call it Design. And then we're going to create two new sheet sheets. One that we're going to call Head and one that we're going to call Handle. Once we have those both created, we're going to go ahead and select all of those vectors. And we're going to copy those to the Head Sheet. Right click on that. Go to Copy to Sheet Head. 
And we can go ahead and take a look at that sheet by double clicking on it. Let's just go ahead and zoom in. Now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and create a locking mechanism for the inside of this. So I'm gonna choose that circle. I'm gonna copy and then I'm gonna paste it back where it is. And I'm gonna use that same thing that I showed you in the last demonstration about not having anything selected, going into the circle tool, holding down my shift key, selecting that circle, and I can go ahead and adjust the parameters like that. And it will go ahead and update that for me. We're gonna select that circle and the handle and we're gonna weld those together. That's exactly what I want. Now that I have that all done, I'm gonna copy the handle to the handle sheet. I'm not gonna change anything with that now. That's all done. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and only keep the center bit of this head. So we're gonna copy the outside head again. We're gonna go ahead and choose those two vectors and we're gonna keep only the overlap. And then we're gonna paste back in that head again. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill it the tops and bottom nodes, the upper nodes and the bottom nodes, uh, the radius of my tool that I'm going to use to cut this with, which is going to be 0.125. I'm going to go ahead and do that. You might need to zoom in a bit just to make sure you get those. And then what I'm going to do is use the same trick I used a little while ago by selecting the nodes on the top and on the bottom. And then I'm going to press V on my keyboard and I can go ahead and nudge those out of the way. I want to nudge them out so that they end up being outside of my handle. That looks about right there. And that's perfect. Now what I can do is go ahead and delete those other dowel holes, copy this section of the vectors, and then go ahead and resize my sheet appropriately so I don't waste any material. I'm gonna cut the head in two halves and then glue it back together with the, once the handle is set in the center. That's why I need two of those. Next thing we're gonna do is go over to the handle and make sure everything is good there. We just need to go ahead and size down that sheet and change the datum for that in the end. And we can get most of that information just by checking the size of the handle and adjusting everything appropriately. Need to change the thickness of my material because that's gonna be a different material. Another great use of sheets because this is a multi-material job that really helps out And there we have it. Now that we have all of our vectors created, we can go in and start to create the tooling. Now these are really basic tool paths. They're just pockets and profiles. There's nothing fancy here. The things that I want to really point out are to make sure that you add some allowances to your pocket so that your the recess that your handle is going to fit into is oversized just slightly and fits in nicely so you don't need to force it in there or do any unneeded sanding. You don't need to click the use vector selector order. That was a little mistake on my part. Make sure that you go ahead and put tabs in in appropriate places so that you can easily remove them and not ruin the finish of your final job. Also, this might be another good tip for jobs like this where using hardwood, using 3D tabs, is the best practice um, because in the end you won't be leaving dwell marks behind that are really hard to sand out. Dwell marks are when your tool goes ahead and moves up and down in the same spot and ends up taking away more material than what you expect. The only thing that's interesting with this job is I couldn't test fit the handle into the head because of the way the material was left behind. So I really had to be sure that I did oversize those pockets enough for the handle to fit in. Here's a little top tip for you. Also, be really sure that you test fit in those dowels to make sure that they fit in. I know you noticed I spelled handle wrong. You probably noticed it a long time ago. Let's correct that now and let's save off our tooling and send it off to the machine.
Well, there you have it, four really easy projects to make. We got the hold downs, we've got a tool tray with a place to put your hold downs. We have this great mallet. I have to say, I really do like my mallet a lot. And also we have this palm sander and you can find out how I made that over on our Instagram channel. Go ahead and have a look at the video and you can learn all about that. Now, all these files are available right now for you to download from your VNCO account. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, please like, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. If you have any comments, please leave them and we'll answer them as soon as we can. Until next time, be safe and happy making.